Welcome to this introductory series on natural language processing. I'm Karen Mazzidi. In 2016, I completed my PhD in computer science with a focus on NLP. When I was presenting my first published paper in 2014 at the ACL conference in Baltimore, a more experienced researcher told me that she loved research because it enabled her to see the world. She was right. During my PhD research, I was able to attend conferences and present my research in Hawaii, Quebec, Madrid, Zagreb, Croatia, and Budapest. I keep up with research of others now, but I focus my time on teaching and creating materials like this for the next generation of researchers and practitioners. The field of NLP involves algorithms for processing human language, which is what we mean by natural language. The term processing language can mean a wide variety of things, such as a device listening for and recognizing the phrase, OK Google, to identifying spam words and emails, to creating a word cloud based on word counts, to classifying product reviews as positive or negative to any of the multitude of tasks that would fall under the umbrella of NLP. By the way, this word cloud was created from the words in chapter one of my book. Natural language processing is a branch of AI, as is machine learning. In a complex NLP project, some components may be purely NLP, others purely machine learning, and others in the general category of AI. All three of these fields are developing rapidly and utilizing techniques from related disciplines in novel ways. In this series, we'll first cover traditional NLP techniques and later machine learning techniques. When two people talk, at least two things are going on. Natural language understanding, meaning that each party understood what the other person said, and natural language generation, the formation of spoken responses. A dialogue-based NLP system needs the ability to understand what a human said and then the ability to generate an appropriate response. Remarkable progress has been made, but this is still an open research area. There's a lot more going on in dialogue between humans than just words. There's tone of voice, body language, eye contact, gestures, and so on. Also, we humans use a lot of idiomatic speech, which can be challenging for machines. Other challenges for machines are sarcasm or hidden motives. One thing you'll notice as you get into NLP is that you start paying a lot more attention to human language and how it works. We learned language so easily as a child that we take it for granted. Where there's AI, there will be hype. Here's the Gartner Hype Cycle for AI 2019. The cycle shows how hype builds to unrealistic expectations at the top of the cycle. Then when limitations of the technology start to be understood, there's a slide downwards. And finally on the far right, we hit a plateau of more realistic expectations as the field matures. Notice speech recognition is plateaued. It's not a completely solved problem, but it's gotten really good. In this series, we won't talk about speech recognition, but focus on text, since speech is readily translated to text form these days. The color code of the dots indicates the expected time until plateau. Notice chatbots are at the top of the cycle next to conversational UIs. Here is NLP, and here are virtual assistants probably about where they will eventually plateau. We can categorize approaches to solving NLP problems as rules-based or statistical probabilistic approaches or deep learning. Rules-based approaches are the oldest techniques in NLP. These methods rely on techniques like regular expressions and context-free grammar production rules. A fun example from the 1960s is ELISA, a rules-based simulation of a therapist. When I was a programmer in the 1980s, working on an IBM 360 mini-computer, there was this program on disk called ELISA. 
I asked everyone what it was, and no one knew. There was no internet back then, so the only way to find out what it was is just to fire it up. And it started talking to me, in text, of course. You can find ELIZA implementations online, and they're fun to play with as you, in your mind, try to reverse engineer the regular expressions used. The quote-unquote therapist echoes back what you have said. When it gets stuck, it has a few one-liners to toss out. Weizenbaum created this to show the superficiality of human-computer dialogue, but ironically, his secretary became attached to the program. Rules-based approaches were common in the 1980s, but didn't scale well because human language is just too complicated for a bunch of rules. Nevertheless, we are going to learn a lot of these approaches because they form part of complex systems involving more modern approaches as well. Starting in the late 1980s, statistical and probabilistic approaches to analyzing texts were becoming popular. Simply counting words and finding the probabilities of words and sequences of words led to useful language models. These models can be part of language translation systems. For example, in my husband's language Farsi, your mother's mother is Mama Bazorg. Translating this literally would be Big Mama, but a probabilistic language model can indicate that a better translation is Grandmother. These language models can also be used for predictive text, as when you're typing a query into a search bar and suggestions start popping up. Classic machine learning algorithms fall into this category as well, since they learn by statistical and probabilistic methods. Machine learning approaches became more popular as the data they need to learn from became more widely available. These approaches work well when only a moderate to large amount of data is available. And they may even outperform deep learning algorithms which need much larger amounts of data to learn from. A statistical approach to a more sophisticated ELISA or other chatbot could involve learning prompt response pairs from a large corpus. This could be done with classic machine learning algorithms or specialized deep learning algorithms. Deep learning evolved from neural networks when huge amounts of data became available and processing power increased through GPUs and cloud computing. These algorithms include recurrent neural networks, convolutional neural networks, LSTMs, and more, but they're all just riffs off the basic neural network. New techniques are coming out every day with really exciting results. However, not everyone has access to petabytes of data and the hardware to process it, so smaller scale deep learning is still used in many NLP applications. In fact, many end-to-end NLP projects will involve techniques from rules-based approaches, statistical and probabilistic approaches, and deep learning. So all three approaches need to be understood. At the cutting edge of AI, often claims are made that can't really be backed up. Here's my favorite quote about that, modified so as not to offend. Actually, a a chatbot or a dialogue agent doesn't need to understand every word the user said or typed. Rather, it can be alert to keywords and phrases and base a response on what is most likely. So you can ask Google or Siri, pizza near me, or I was wondering if there's any good pizza near me, and options will be presented either way. Every day, you're likely to encounter several real-world NLP applications, such as sentiment analysis, automated assistance, machine translation, such as Google Translate, recommender systems, automated email reply suggestions, and more. Companies have spent millions or hundreds of millions of dollars in untold man hours building, improving, and maintaining these systems. However, when you get down to the lines of code, much of it involves techniques that we'll cover in this series. In this series, we first look at foundations. A Python refresher, the Natural Language Toolkit NLTK, and a shallow dip into the field of linguistics. Then we'll look at text and widening scope from words to how those words combine to form sentences, to meaning that can be extracted from documents, and finally to machine learning techniques. 
Along the way, we'll use techniques such as web scraping and becoming familiar with the most important state-of-the-art text processing tools and how to use them. I'm glad you're with us. The next video will be a brief refresher of Python, which we'll be using throughout the series. If you need a more substantial refresher, check out my Python Fundamentals series on YouTube. Until next time, I leave you with this wordy quote from the Persian poet Hafez. The words you speak become the house you live in. Thank <laughs> you.